Here it is, the Moke Wheel Upland Plus Fat Tire E-Bike. I'm going to tell you a few things about this bike and some tips on assembly that you can apply to any e-bike. Stay tuned. This is the first of a series of three videos I'm going to do focused on the Moke Wheel Upland Plus. They're basically, after this video, going to be looking specifically at how to use this bike for e-bike fishing. But in this video, what we're going to cover is some of the features about this that make it unique. And you should look for those same features in any e-bike you're considering buying. Now, before I get into the content of the video, I need to point out that Moquil gave me this bike for free to evaluate for my unbiased review. I have no financial obligation or connection to the company, no commissions, no affiliate links, none of that. They're relying on me to be open and honest as we discuss this bike. Now I'm going to put the assembly tips at the back of the video because they're only interesting if you have this particular bike or a similar bike. What I want to do right now is let's dive in to the first thing you need to consider when you're buying any e-bike for outdoor activity. This is so obvious, but no one's going to think of it except me. So I'm throwing the key in here. Not that the key is anything special, but notice that this battery came off from the top. This is critical because there are a number of places where you cannot use an electric bike but you can use a fat tire bike. And given the gearing on this, particularly where I'm going to use it in the surf and on the beach, it's all fairly level. And this bike will run just fine without this 10 pound motor. And I can go out and enjoy the bike on those places because I can remove the battery. But here's the wrinkle. Notice the battery came off from the top. If you have a battery that comes off from the bottom, what's going to happen? Well, all the stuff is going to get kicked off from your tires and go right in to the sensitive uh, controls down here that connect the controller of the bike to your battery. And so do you want all those to get nasty, dirty, sandy, and corroded? No! So the first thing you need to look at when you're buying an e-bike is does the battery removed from the top. And while we're on the battery, this particular battery is a 750 watt beast with 16 amp hours of capacity. And if you're a, a fishing guy, because this is a fishing channel, you know more amp hours on your trolling motor means more range. So 16 amp hours is huge and that gives it enough power to drive the motor, which is puts out 86 newton meters of torque and that's enough to get you up and down some hills. But what I really wanted to talk about on this battery is the connector. Check this out. It's got a standard DC connector plug. Given that it has a standard connector plug, you could actually hook this up to a solar panel in an emergency. Now, quite frankly, Mach Wheel does not endorse that and would probably violate your warranty. But if there's no choice, if you're in a big brownout or power outage and you need your, your motorized bike to get around, getting a solar controller that has adjustable voltages to match that of the charger could keep your mock wheel moving when other e-bikes that don't have that standard connector are just going to be sitting there dead in the water. Solar controllers are inexpensive, so that's the second huge advantage of this particular bike. This is another one of those things of what don't you see? Well, what don't you see here is that the controller sitting on the outside of the frame. And that means that the controller is protected on the inside here where it's not going to get damaged if you hit a rock or accidentally drop this sucker as you're trying to put it on your, your hitch on your truck. And that leads us to the next obvious thing of repair parts. Well, I checked out the Moke Wheel website and they've got repair parts for pretty much anything that would go wrong on this bike once it's out of warranty. And yes, they do sell a controller that you could put in here if your controller died. And so now we need to go look at 
how easy would it be to replace that sensitive piece of equipment? And that's where we need to go look at the front. And here's the answer right here. Notice that all these connectors have plugs. That means you can disconnect all this stuff and remove the controller and replace it without having to basically disassemble your entire bike. So be sure on any bike you look for that it has removable connectors to make repair easy. Let's run through quickly some of the other features of the bike. Uh, many of them are consistent with other e-bikes that you would see in this price range, but one thing that jumped out to me was that the Zoom brakes are double piston. So they're not just a single piston pushing up against the 180 millimeter disc, it's actually going in from both sides. And to me, that's gonna make it a lot easier to keep that brake system aligned and operating smoothly. In addition, you've got the heavy spokes on the front and the back. The ones in the back are actually heavier. That's where the motor is. And that motor, like I said earlier, is a beast. The tires are Chow Yang, and the tread pattern looks just perfect for me for the beach. The bike comes with fenders, and that's critical, because you don't want to get splattered with, with wet uh, as you're riding down the beach or anywhere where there's a chance of mud or water. It's got an adjustable front fork suspension that looks like it has a pretty good range. Check out the welds on this thing. This is a beast. The bike weighs 80 pounds with the battery, but these are not going to break at all. And it's easy to see that this bike has been designed to be survivable. The chain is fully protected on both sides and that even if you bump against something on the bottom, it's not going to disrupt the chain. Now, I did notice that the chain itself did not come uh, lubricated. It feels like it's pretty dry, so before you start using the bike, be sure you do that. I love the fact that it came with a rear rack. I can't imagine having a fat tire e-bike without the rear rack, and this is a pretty solid heavy duty capacity rack that's going to be perfect for the fishing gear I'm going to load on here. Standard Shimano derailleur in the back and again you have the disc brake system of zoom brakes back there in the back as well. The handlebars are a critical part of the good design of this particular bike. Not only does it have an index mark over here where you can know what your setting is and then someone else could get on the bike, loosen this and then change the angle of the handlebars. But the handlebars themselves are in a U configuration, which allows for a more upright riding posture. The grips are leather. Here's the throttle. Standard seven gear Shimano uh, gear shifting. The passenger assist level gets changed here and here. There's where you turn it on. It's even got a horn. And this is where you turn on the light. I really like the fact that it includes an integrated tail light that turns on and off when you turn the headlight off and also operates when you press the brake pedals. That's a great safety feature for this bike. It's, I like the fact that the LCD is pure black and white with huge numbers. Here you can see the LCD in full sun. Very easy to read even with polarized glasses. There are four holes on the front if you wanted to put a front rack on and they're threaded for the standard M6 one pitch screw. The pedals are basically typical pedals. They are serviceable and they do have the prongs on here to allow your footwear to have a little bit of a grab. Moving up, the seat post is nicely adjustable. And the seat is very soft. This is a comfortable seat. One negative about the bike is that there is no quick release for the front wheel. Before I go out on the test ride, range becomes the next question. The manufacturer says that this can do between 30 and 55 miles of range, but we all know that is dependent on how much you actually pedal and what power assist setting you use. Well, let me get my helmet on. Let's get out there, do a test ride. And again, the assembly tips are at the back of the video. 
couple things I want to do as I go out on this initial road test. The first is to ride it on level ground without any power assist at all to get a feel for the ability of the bike to perform on a dead battery. Then I'll run around a little bit to get the feel of the different power assist levels. I'll bed the brakes and then take a little bit of a ride and come back and I'll let you know what I think. I ran the bike initially without any power assist at all. It shifted smoothly and I confirmed I could actually use this bike without the battery, no problem. Running around, I switched into the different power assist levels and they accelerated smoothly and easily. I've got no problems with how this bike performs on the road. I'm back from the test ride and overall it's positive. Let me uh, explain a couple things about how this works. The power assist levels are preset. So for example, at least on this bike, in preset number one, 10 mile an hour is the max. Preset number two, 15 miles an hour is the max. And the negative is that that is also tied into the throttle. So say you're in assist level one and you want to goose it a little bit to get over an obstacle or something like that, turning the throttle isn't going to instantly give you any more speed if you're already maxed out at 10 miles an hour. You have to bump it up to the next level, then hit it, and you'll get the boost up to the max at that power assist level. The other thing, of course, and this isn't a negative thing, it's a good thing, is that this set of handlebars is adjustable. So you want to be able, during your test ride, take the appropriate Allen key with you so you can adjust this and get it tuned in so you're looking good for your test ride. Well, let, let's get into the assembly tips. The first thing you need to do, of course, is get your battery charging so you can take it on the test ride. Now, one indication of a quality company is that they ship all the tools you need to assemble a bike. And in this case, we have the Allen keys and the wrenches required. And a nice touch is they sent a tire pump because the tires are not fully inflated. And of course, pedals and the front fender, as well as reflectors, this is pretty nice in terms of some of the spare parts. In addition to zip ties, extra screws, they actually give you two sets of brake pads. That's pretty nice. And extra clamps for the wheels. So the first thing we need to do is get the handlebars on here. The very first step of the assembly can be problematic if you're a stickler for precision like I am. You have to loosen these two bolts and then rotate the stem from here to the front. Well, this has to match exactly with your front fork. And so what I did is I'm using a square to be able to check that I've got it lined up exactly perfectly. I wish that they had provided an index mark back here to make this easier. But once you've got it set up and you're satisfied, you can move on to the next step. When you put the handlebars on, be sure you get the center line aligned with the center of the cover. Don't worry about the horizontal crosshair because that's one that you will use to set this to your desired angle. And this is just one of the features that makes this nice for multiple people to use. One person can have it set at say 15 and another could have it set at minus 15. So you can customize this in terms of the rotation back and forth of the handlebars to your personal preference. That front works in conjunction with this index right here. So what you can do, again, for multiple people, is you can unscrew this a little bit, move the handlebars up to your desired height, and then rotate them again to your desired angle. That way, multiple people can use the same bike, and with a few simple screw adjustments, they can make sure that the riding position is exactly what they want. I think this is a very nice feature. Putting the wheel on the best way requires flipping the bike over and resting it on the handlebars. But as you can see here, as it comes from the factory, the shifter sticks up a little bit. And what I would recommend you do is get two wood blocks to rest the handlebars on to keep this up off the ground. Otherwise, you have to go ahead and adjust it and then rotate it down. 
what I'm going to do is I've got these handlebar jacks that are great, and I'm going to put these on here, and then I don't have to worry about where any of the associated instruments are. I know I'll be up off the ground. The most sensitive part about the installation is putting on the front wheel and making sure that the disc brake is aligned between the two pads without bending the disc brake. So you need to put it on here very slowly, very carefully, and then rest it in the slots provided. Rotate the tires and listen for any noise. I can hear just a little bit of rubbing, so I'm going to have to adjust these brakes just a hair. But I won't do that until after I bed the brakes, because that may solve the issue. And that's it. It's fully assembled. That wraps it up. Nice functional bike, plenty of power. The next video will cover how to customize this for fishing. And I'll cover mostly surf fishing, because there's only just one little tweak for freshwater fishing on trails. So stay tuned and look for that video. Thanks.